No clue, eh? Well, I suppose I'm lucky the fellow only got away with the emerald. Thank you, thank you very much. Good morning, Miss Payne. Good morning, Mr. Rogers. I'd like to speak with you regarding your report on inquestable... Sit down. How long have you been reading with this, Miss Payne? Two years. Two years, eh? And you turn in a report like this? On a book which is a potential bestseller. I was thinking of something more than just the book. The reputation of the company. Did I ask you for a report on the reputation of the Rogers Publishing Company? Why, no. But I judge manuscripts not only on their intrinsic value to the firm, but also their effect upon the company's reputation. Well, I suppose we dispense with that in this case. And to judge this manuscript on the merits of cash returns. Well, I'm sure it'll bring in lots of money. No doubt rates with the best sellers. Then why do you recommend its rejection? Simply this. Because it is trashy, written with the sole thought of money for the author, and has no place in the literary world. The publication of such material is sure to lower the company in the estimation of first-class writers. You're quite right. The book is rejected. Oh, just a moment. For some months, I've been looking for an assistant. It hadn't occurred to me to consider you. In fact, I was about to name Miss Davidson, but there was some question in my mind regarding her environment. Then you will consider me? You're far-sighted, and... You have a keen mind, Miss Vane. Uh, may I ask where you went to school and where you're living at present? City High School. You see, I couldn't afford to attend college. You're self-educated. Well, I've read a great deal. In fact, uh, not only here, but at home. I read almost everything other companies put out. And you live? 41 Exeter Place. Quite a fashionable district at one time. Have you lived there long? I was born there. My father and mother moved there when they were first married. Many old families have clung to their early homes in spite of the city crowding in on them. Tenacity of character, I guess. Don't want to give up family tradition and settle elsewhere. Quite commendable. I hadn't thought of it that way. I'm sure of it. Home environment develops character. Families continuously on the move. They can't have much stability. Well, I'll make my decision very soon. Thank you. Hello, Mother. Oh, you're late again. Oh, I'm sorry, but I had some shopping to do. Something for me? No, blast for myself. You would be buying something for yourself and me needing stockings. You'll never need stockings, Mother, as long as you can find out where I hide mine. <laughs> well, let's see the blouse. Oh. Maybe that might fit me, too. Hmm? I suppose it will when you find out where I hide this, too. You better go and clean up. I've been keeping your supper hot in the oven. Thanks. Maybe I can buy you something next week. Well, if it ain't the young book publisher. The publishing anything hot these days? Yes. A couple of volumes on Sing Sing Penitentiary. But you two won't have to read them. No. They'll learn about it from the inside if they don't quit running around with that bunch of hoodlums. Old stuff. You're getting as high hat as Annie. I used to think I could get my head above the gutter, but it ain't no use. Oh, well, certainly you can, Mother. Maybe I'll get a good position soon, and then we can take a place by ourselves. Chris and Elmer can do as they like. Oh, I used to think that, too, when I married your pa, but it didn't do no good. You can't raise yourself by your own bootstraps. A good pull at those shoes of yours, and they'd fall to pieces. Don't cry, Mother. <laughs> I'll give you those new walking shoes of mine. I don't need them anyway. You boys ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Don't cry, Mother. I'll be back in a jiffy. Don't forget I'm hungry. Hey, Purse, what do you think of Mulan's chances tomorrow in the fifth? Nothing that's named after T's got a chance these days. A ten dollar parlay on Oolong? Geraldine and Tommy Boy would pay off close to three grand. Yeah.
Hey, Elmer. Hmm? Why are you always betting on horses with pansy names? It's too bad there ain't a big he horse in here named Percy. Yeah. yeah. Does Miss Payne, Miss Ann Payne, live here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Come on in. Thank you. Who'll I tell us here? Bruce Rogers, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're the guy she works for, ain't you? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm Percy, Annie's brother. That's no you. This is Elm, Annie's other brother. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Anne's always saying what a great guy you are. That's very kind of her. Yeah. Sit down, sit down. I'll, I'll tell you here. Thank you. Sure, yeah. right down there. Lay your things down if you want. Have a cigarette? No, no thanks. Who are you betting on in the fifth, Mr. Rogers? The fifth? Yeah, the fifth race, tomorrow. I hadn't thought of placing a bet. Take my tip and put a century on Oolong. I'm afraid I'm not sufficiently well acquainted with horses to, to want to bet on them. Oh, is that so? Tell you what I'll do, Rogers. You got money and I know horses. Suppose we go in together and split 50-50. I'm very sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Payne, but I am not a betting man. Mm. Yes? Yes, what is it? Your boss is here. My boss? Yeah, you know, that Rogers guy. The one you're always talking about. Come on, he wants to see you. She'll be here in a minute. Thank you. More than likely, she's taking a bath. Greatest kid you ever saw in your life for taking baths. Spends half of the time in the tub. That's very commendable. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have any trouble locating us? A little. I inquired at the house in front. Yeah. <laughs> Annie's always blowing that she lives in extra place. Naturally, all of her boyfriends think that she lives in that house in the front where the banker lives. I inquired there. They were very kind and directed me here. Well, I should think they would be. After us living for more than 30 years in their stable. You see, Pa used to be their family coachman back in the 90s. And Ma was Mrs. Cummins' personal maid. I'm Ann's mother. I'm very happy to know you. Oh, keep your seat. Keep your seat. I'll go and see what's keeping her. First, I was telling Bruce, you don't mind me calling you Bruce, do you? Oh, of course not. I was telling Bruce I could give him some good tips on horse racing, where we could both make some real jack. <laughs> You'd think that Elm was a roommate of that pony Oolong's, the way he's always trying to dig up dough to put on his nose. Every man has his pet hobby, I suppose. And apparently your brother's is horsey. Sure is. What's yours, Bruce? Oh, I collect first edition. And occasionally, I buy a rare jewel. Well, maybe you'd be interested in... in... in, in Oolong. No. <laughs> no. Oh, Mother, I just can't face him. Well, you just got to. If he's interested enough to come here and see you, maybe we can all make an impression on him. Impression? Yes. A big impression. But it won't be the right kind. I've worked hard for a promotion to make good. The chance to get out of this place. Mr. Rogers was brought up differently. Just today he was talking to me about environment. He said that makes character. Well, I hope you'll pardon me, but I must be going. You ain't going now, are you? Well, Annie will be here in a minute. I'm sorry, but I must. Oh, you're not leaving, Mr. Rogers? Yes, I'm sorry, I must go. I. Uh... 
I just remembered an appointment. Oh, well, then I'll see you in the morning. Oh, yes. Probably. What happened? Nothing. Elm just tried to get him to bet on Oolong, and I tried, tried to... to get him to bet on a crooked horse race. That's not crooked. Oh, anything you're connected with is crooked. Now, Annie. Ah, oh, turn off them tears. You can make it up with your little palsy wowsy tomorrow when you go to work. You two will bring disgrace on us yet. Bring disgrace? You're just a couple of dirty low down croaks. Too lazy to work. I had my one big chance and now you've spoiled it. There, there, honey. Maybe you'll get another chance. <laughs> oh, I'm sick and tired of this place. If you hadn't stopped me, I would have sold Rogers this. He ain't sap enough to buy back what we pinched off him, you dumb cluck. Oh, I didn't know that was his house. You wouldn't. Glad to help out. Swell night. Nice moon. You know, I sit here every night. Nothing to do but think. Quite inspirational listening to the voice of the night. Birds, and crickets, and the wind sighing. Nothing to disturb you. There's something about the night that's different from the day. Darker. Maybe that is it. Have a fresh one? You're not proposing, are you? Well, you look pretty good, but after all, I don't know enough about you. Just what do you expect for lighting one cigarette? A permanent home? Oh, I'd have to see the home first. Maybe you would fit in. It was a made-over stable. One for your side. When do I move in? Suit yourself. I'm not going back. You mean you have no place to sleep tonight? Sure I have. The morgue. Hey, that's foolish. The world owes everyone a living. Try and collect. Now... Now listen, if everyone with troubles jumped in that lake, the fish would have to move out. Come on, tell me what's wrong. What's the use? Well, you wouldn't believe it. But a month ago, I was sitting right on this bench thinking about the same thing. 
I'd hit a snag and I was sure I was a failure. Then I took a grip on myself and wrote most of it over. Now I have a wow of a manuscript, big publisher has it, and it's going to be a bestseller. Here, cut that out. I'll run along and blow your whistle. You heard what I said. Sure, I heard you, Mike, you old flatfoot. Well, if it isn't Ronnie Ross, well, how's the Tribune? Trying to struggle along without me, Mike. I've quit the reporter racket and turned novelist. Well, you couldn't write one any worse than a book I tried to read last week. Sex stuff. About a king with six wives. Six wives? Who was the author? A guy by the name of Shakespeare. And is he rotten? Hmm, he was a bit old-fashioned. There's nothing old-fashioned about a king with six wives and whipping off their heads with an axe every time he wants to run around with another one. Maybe he had sex appeal. Sex appeal? I'd call it axe appeal. She's gone. Who? The girl. The one you was necking? I wasn't necking her, Mike. I was talking about a suicide. Well, darn if she ain't done it. Here, lay her down here. Turn the right over now. There. Now I better go get an ambulance. Never mind the ambulance. Give me a lift. Listen. You go over to the firehouse and get a pull motor and send it over to my place right away and get a doctor, too. Right. Why, why, what's happened? Why, who is she? Oh, I don't know. I pulled her out of the lake. I'd better get a blanket. Yes. That's Mike. I'll let him in. There's life, but the pulse is very weak. Oh, then she'll live. My son kept her lungs going until the fireman arrived. And then she can thank him if she recovers. She's breathing freely now. Do you want to remain here, or shall I call an ambulance? Oh, no. We'll keep her here. Very well. Then we'd better get her in bed. Uh, right this way, gentlemen. Officer. Have you a hot water bottle? Oh, yes, doctor. I'll get it right away. Will you hand me those clothes, please? Yes. 
have this prescription filled and follow directions. And phone me at the least sign of pneumonia. All right, I'll go right away. Wait. Get some dry clothes on yourself. I'll take care of the prescription. All right, thanks, Mike. She's beautiful, Mother. Yes, son. Beautiful. And we don't know a thing about her. Oh, yes, I do. A face like that denotes sweetness and strength of character. Oh, you're becoming a nut on that character stuff. Oh, no, Ronnie. You're weak like your father. Well, you talk as though you're a little ashamed of me. Not ashamed, son. Just a little worried. You see, I love you. How did I get in here? I brought you here last night after you jumped in the lake. Where am I anyway? You're in my room. Your room? And those are my pajamas. I don't remember putting them on. You don't remember a pull motor being put on you either. A pull motor? A couple of firemen had that pleasure. Who are you anyway? Oh, I'm that fresh guy you met in the park last night. You know, the one who lit your cigarette? The bozo that kept a new face out of heaven. Figured I'd rather have a little angel in my home. Well, I'm not going to thank you. But I will be grateful if you let me leave here at once. But you said you had no place to go. I'm going back to the lake. Oh, not in my new pajamas. Well, give me my clothes then. Now, what do you want to do? Catch pneumonia? Uh, by the way, what, what's your name? Anne. The last doesn't count. Not unless you're married. I'm not. I'm not either. The first name's Ronald. Ronnie, for short. If you're interested, Anne. I suppose I should be thankful for all you've done. But I'm a bit afraid that you've only complicated things for me. Maybe I can help you. No money, no job, not even a home. Family dead? No. They're not that well off. You can stay here till you get on your feet. Stay here with you? Sure, why not? If I were that kind of a girl, I wouldn't have tried to drown myself. Like it or not, you're going to stay right here. Give me my dress. Did I hear you speak of leaving? Why? Why, yes. Why, you won't be over danger of pneumonia for a week. You must stay here and rest and relax. She thought I lived alone. This is my mother, Anne. I uh, don't recommend her as a chaperone. She's too strict. Give her one of your best speeches on the beauties of life while I fix you some tea. Ronnie's a cook and maid around here. You see, I'm a bit handicapped. I misunderstood about his wanting me to stay here. I thought... You mustn't mind his teasing. He's a good, sweet boy. I'm sure you'll like Ronnie when you understand him better. I'm sure I will. I'm not going to ask you why you did this desperate thing. But I am asking you to stay here with us and think things over. 
I can remember a time when I thought I couldn't go on. It was when they told me I'd never walk again. But I carried through. And I've learned that life can be just as beautiful as one cares to make it. Thank you. By virtue of authority, vested in me by the church and the laws of this state, I pronounce you man and wife. Surprise, Mrs. Ross. Well, go ahead, dear, open it. I've had to keep him from showing it to you for a week. First copy off the press, and it's dedicated to my wife. In fact, it's financing the honeymoon. I tried to get him to have his name on it. Instead of publishing it anonymously, it seems anything worth publishing is worthy of the author's name. They say it's sure to be a bestseller. Well, dear, haven't you anything to say? Aren't you taking a chance? Dedicating it to a wife you didn't have? Oh, well, I figured you wouldn't turn down a rising young author. Maybe you'd like to take it along and read it on your honeymoon. I think I shall leave it at home for your mother to read and see if she recommends it. Because I'm planning on giving you my entire attention for the next week. that Annie was coming home today from a honeymoon. Yeah, we thought we'd drop in and sit my congratulations. Mm. Oh, uh, what? Are you friends of Anne? Well, she must have talked about us. We're her family. Oh, oh yes, I, I believe she did. She always was trying to keep us in the background. Well, Anne, just telephone from the station. They'll be here in a few minutes. Won't you sit down? Yeah, thanks. Think I will. Yeah. Break a leg or something, Mrs. Ross? I know. I've been paralyzed for years. It must be a relief to be paralyzed and not have to get down on your knees and scrub floors. I'd be willing to scrub floors all day. If I could only recover the use of my limbs. Well, I don't expect to get no rest till I'm put in my coffin. Say, Mrs. Ross, I read Ronnie's book and it's a pip. If he's anything like that book sounds, him and me's gonna be pals. Ronnie isn't in the least like that book. I don't have no time to read, but... To now, Ma, don't go into that long story about when you was Mrs. Cummins' maid and Pa was the coachman. Why, I'd like to hear it. <sighs> That must be Ann and Ronnie now. Sit down. Annie is swell-headed enough without us letting her think we're anxious to see her. Oh, hello, Mother. Oh, wow. Hello. Oh. <laughs> hello, Mom. Have a good trip? Oh, lovely. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. We thought we'd surprise you, sis. Well, for once you've accomplished something you set out to do. 
Well, you ain't done so bad yourself. Ain't you glad to see your poor old ma? Of course I am. <laughs> it's those two I don't want hanging around. I'd hoped I'd never see you again. Too good for your own brothers, huh? It's hardly my fault you're my brothers. We ain't so hot about you either, Miss Hi Hat. And you still be angry. I'm sure they love you or they wouldn't have looked you up. But and what? please. Well, if we're not welcome here, we'll go. Mother, I'm sorry I was rude. I guess I, I'm a little upset. We've been looking for you for your own good. Bruce came back hunting for you. He wanted to make you his assistant. Yeah, he's crazy about you. Oh, just in a business way. He just wanted to give her a promotion down at the book company. You can call it that if you want, Ronnie. Oh, please sit down. Anne isn't, isn't quite herself. Anne, don't you want to lie down a few minutes? If everyone will excuse me and forgive me, I'll rest a bit. Can I help, dearie? I'll be all right, thanks. Uh, come with us, Mr. Bain. You might want to see Anne's new home. Oh, I'd like to see it. Anne has told me a lot about you. I'll bet she has. Says Elmer is interested in the ponies and... Oh, I'll uh, say I am. Well, I could have made that Sap Rogers ten grand if he'd have taken my tip and put a century on Oolong. Well, I've never met the gentleman, personally. But he overlooked a good bet when he turned down my book. Well, he ain't overlooking no bets when it comes to dames. You can bank on that. I'm sure Anne isn't interested, if that's what you're alluding to. Maybe not. She ain't been married long enough. Let's forget that. Say, maybe you're interested in jewelry, Ronnie. No. I wouldn't know a diamond from a rhinestone. Why invest in jewelry when you can make a fortune on the ponies? Mm, but I don't know ponies either. You don't have to know one end of a horse from another. Just leave that to me. Depends upon which end. <laughs> now that Oolong has entered into Derby. He's going to make a fortune for someone. It might as well be us. Well, when he runs, we might place a small bet. Well, I think we'd better be going. Miss Fain, or rather Mrs. Ross, to see you, sir. Sure, hurry in. Hello. How do you do? I'd almost given up hope of ever seeing you again. I've owed you an apology for a long time. An apology? For my family, that night. Please forget it. I. I shouldn't have dropped in so unexpectedly. Your coming unannounced didn't change things. Had I known you were calling, I might have sent my brothers out. Then I would have been sailing under false colors. It's I who owe you an apology. All that talk about environment, I'm afraid, discouraged you. Made you feel you hadn't been able to climb above what a lot of girls have fallen to. I was thoroughly ashamed of myself afterwards for the way I treated you. And then later on, a little clear thinking convinced me of your true worth. I sent for you not only to apologize, but to ask you to become my assistant. Oh, I appreciate the offer, but you see, Ronnie needs me. Are you helping him to write? I'm encouraging him to attempt better things. And I'll expect great things from him with your help. He's falling under the influence of my brothers. He says he gets a kick out of them. Is he writing? Not a word. And you know, his first book didn't set the world on fire after a few honest critics reviewed it. Is he financially able to give up his career with the responsibility of a young wife? No, but I hope he can get him started. Remember, there's always a place for you here. Thank you. I won't forget. Oh, 
dear. Well, I've been watching the clock. What's the big idea? I'm just lonely, waiting for the sweetest little pal in the world. You working today? Uh, yes. Uh, I've been trying to get a new idea lined up. Nothing down on paper. Oh, well, I've been waiting for my inspiration to come home. <laughs> that sounds like the Ronnie I'm married. <laughs> He what is bothering you? It sounds like Pollyanna. <laughs> it's rather tough when you have to please two women. Oh, son, I don't want you hiding anything from your wife. It's a surprise. Well, out with it. No secrets in this house, Ronnie. Uh, Elmer was over today. Yes? And he tipped me off to a good thing. He let me in on something that means money. Well, what is it? Oh, why don't you wait and see? I am waiting. What is it? The Derby. It's all fixed. A horse race. And you wagered your money. You'd bet too if you had a sure thing. How much? How much did you bet? A thousand dollars. And I'll make five thousand on the deal. A thousand dollars? Why, that's all we have. Sweetheart, Elmer got the tip from one of the jockeys. The race is fixed, so we can't lose. Elmer doesn't know any more about the races than I do. There's just one chance. Come on. Put your coat on. Now what are you going to do? We've got to get that money back. <laughs> Pretty soft, Elm. Pretty soft. Exactly. I want that money. What money? You know, what's the matter? Oh, Ronnie wanted Elm to place a bet for him. If you'd wise yourself up on the racing dope, you'd know that Oolong is sure fire. You mean backfire? I'll oh, keep your shirt on. Give me that money. Oh, shut up, both of you. You'll feel like a sap when that horse comes in first. Give me that money. You'll have to talk to the bookie. You want to get that dough back? Well, Oolong's won twice in a row. There's nothing to prevent him from coming in today. Just about post time. Well, I don't want Ronnie making his money that way. I want him to work for it. Watch that dame change her tune when she hears we picked up five grand on a cinch. This is station KBR. You will now hear the regular news bulletin brought to you over this station each afternoon by Don Murray. To the courtesy of the Daily News, leading evening newspaper. Good afternoon. From Kentucky comes a special news flash, the result of the Derby, just finished. Listen. The favorite carried off the honors in the Derby today. Scottish maid, one handily as predicted. Black Prince placed. And Tommy Boy showed a good length ahead of the scattered field. Oolong, a hot tip, proved weak tea, coming in last. Come on. From Washington, D.C. comes the interesting information that the president... There's 500 of that sap's dough. You'd have been in a hot spot if Oolong had won. It takes me to pick losers. I'm afraid you're not going to like it, Ronnie. But I'm returning to work tomorrow. Hmm. Afraid I can't support you? Don't be sarcastic. One of us has to work. Oh, I'll start a new yarn tomorrow. Honest, I will. It takes months to write a good story. Months of concentrated effort without worry. Now, nah, we'll get along somehow. Mr. Rogers has asked me to come back as his assistant. Assistant? You mean... I mean just what I said. And nothing more. I won't have you around him. He's crazy about you. Don't you think you've done enough to make me unhappy? I hate him. He's a fool. A conceited fool. 
He rejected my book because he didn't have brains enough to recognize a good manuscript. It wasn't his fault. Well, surely it wasn't mine. Well, I suppose I should have told you, Ronnie. I recommended its rejection because it was cheap and trashy, without literary merit. You? But you didn't hesitate to spend a honeymoon on what another publisher paid me for it. I did hesitate, Ronnie. I almost told you when I learned you were the author. But you didn't tell me. No, that was the day of our marriage. Can't you understand I want to help you, dear? Don't you realize that I'm going back to work to give you an opportunity to accomplish something? Mm, and to give Rogers a chance, too. Good night, Ronnie. So you won't even listen to what I have to say. I have to be up early in the morning on the job at 9 o'clock. Hi, Ronnie. Oh, hello. We just passed by and so we dropped in. Say hello. Yeah, we thought you'd be kind of lonesome with Annie working all day. Well, I'm pretty busy in the kitchen. Uh, cooking. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's Jake with us. See, we can only stay a minute anyhow. So, you're the cook, huh? Well, you see, Ann is working and yeah. Mother isn't feeling very well. Oh. Pretty soft for Annie. Her boss stuck on her and you home cooking? Well, what if he is? It won't do him any good. Well, I wouldn't trust any girl with that guy. He's pretty smooth. Oh, shut up. Ann can take care of herself. Sure, they all can. But do they? You can't talk that way about my wife, even if she is your sister. I wouldn't think of asking you to, Mrs. Russ, but the work is really very important and there's no one else I can trust. Oh, that's quite all right. I've always wanted to see your collection of books anyway. Hello? Oh, Ronnie, dear. I'm sorry I can't be home until late. I'm helping Mr. Rogers catalog some of his very rare books. Not here, at his home. Don't you see enough of him all day without going home with him at night? You won't need to call for me. Mr. Rogers will send me home. Say, what do you think I've been cooking for all afternoon? Ah. Uh. What's the matter? You look like somebody kicked you in the face. Yeah, you sure do. Anne's not coming home, and me cooking all day. Little night work at the office? No, it's at Roger's house. I usually start by staying at the office, but she's doing a standing broad jump. Well, Anne always was pretty smart in wanting to hang around people with money and influence. Oh, yeah? Well, my wife's not going to hang around any man. Well, I guess if a guy depends on his wife to bring in the bacon, he can't squeal if she tells him how to cook it. Do you know where Rogers lives? Sure. Over in Long Island. One of them swell dumps. Well, I'm going there right now and bring her home. Atta boy, we'll show you where he lives. And me and personal is a couple of swell speaks on the way over.
This is one of my real treasures. Picked it up in London last year at an auction at Christie's. What is it? Milton's Paradise Lost. Oh, how interesting. First edition in original binding. I tried to get Paradise regained. Almost had it too. But a member of the Nouveau Riche outbid me. Well, maybe he'll tire of it someday and then you can add it to your collection. I'm afraid by that time it will be irreparably damaged. The binding's cracked and leaves torn. There's nothing demands so much care as valuable books. Arthur and Scarlet Letter. Bears the author's autograph. Oh, may I see it? I want to see Bruce Rogers. Mr. Rogers is very busy at the moment. He'll see me. Your card, please. What is that? A 17th century French volume. A little too frankly illustrated, I'm afraid, for a young lady. I'm not prudish. Will you give me your card, please? He, he thought his way fast, mister. Ronnie, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? He must have been drinking her. He never would have intruded. No apologies necessary. Seems as though I wasn't any too early. With you assuring him there's nothing prudish in your makeup. That was in reference to the illustrations in an old French book. Shall I show him out, sir? Uh, no, no, James, not at all. Uh, but you may wait in the hall. Yes. Under normal circumstances, I'd be very happy to welcome you in my home, Mr. Ross. But unless you are able to control your overzealous imagination, I must insist that you leave at once. Yes, Ronnie. You must apologize to Mr. Rogers and leave. No apologies, and you're leaving with me. Please don't insist. But I do insist. You either walk out or I'll carry you out. I must apologize for him. Ron is not himself tonight, or he never would have come here. You've been insulted twice. Once in my home, and now in yours. I must ask you to accept my resignation. I accept your apology, which I never asked for. But, Anne, I will not accept your resignation. So the cat's out of the bag. She's Anne to you when I'm not around. You've gone a bit too far with your insinuations regarding your wife. Now I do demand an apology. Try and get it. Oh! oh. Please don't, Mr. Rogers. I'm sorry I struck him. Now I'm going to tell him something. You intruded here tonight to accuse me of ungentlemanly intentions towards your wife. Now I insist that you know the truth, so that you can set your mind at rest. I made your wife my assistant because she deserved the post. I asked her to come here and help me tonight because there's no one else I could trust with this work. Naturally. As I know she's your wife, I have never breathed a word to her or given her any idea at all regarding my affections. But now I'm going to tell you something that even Anne doesn't know. I do love her, but it's not the sort of love that coincides with your vile suspicions. I appreciate everything you've said, and I feel I should be as fair as you. Go ahead. Tell him you love him. No, Ronnie. I love you. And I guess I always will. Will you get me my wrap, please? Certainly. And I... No, Ronnie. Oh, so it was all a lie. A pretense. I'm sorry, Mr. Rogers. Please forget it. You'll oblige me and save yourself a lot of trouble by keeping away from my wife. so I just came right in. Anne, there's been strange men dropping in asking for the boys. Detectives? They didn't say so, but I can smell a cop farther than I can see him. I'm worried too. 
Ronnie hasn't been home since that night at Bruce Rogers. I didn't want to worry you, honey, but I've been suspecting all along that he's living with Elmer and Percy. He came home with them and went out with them again the next morning. You don't think the detectives are after Ronnie, too, do you? Oh, I don't know. What did Ronnie have to say? Was he angry with me? He didn't seem very glad. He kept saying you'd put something over on him, that you were stuck on Rogers. I took a lot off of your pa, with him being drunk and chasing out all the time. I ain't never seen no reward yet. But maybe it's coming up above. Well, one thing about heaven, you won't have to wash and scrub. Oh. Oh. Well, that's all for this week. If I can get Ronnie back and start into writing, we'll be able to get you out of here. Oh, honey, I wouldn't know how to act sitting around twiddling my thumbs. Hmm. Well, I must be going now. Let me know if you hear anything from Ronnie. Oh, hello, Mike. Have you got a day off? No, I got a promotion. You're talking to Detective Lieutenant Michael O'Flanagan. Well, congratulations. I hope you like your new job. Well, there's just one way to hold a job, and that is to do your duty. Like it or not. It must be pretty hard when you know it's going to break your heart. There was a man in the old country one time that hung his own son. They couldn't find anyone else to do the job because everybody loved the lad. He executed his own son? I can't believe it. The father knew he had to do something to save his son from committing more crimes. It's... it's all right, Mike. I'll give him up. Give him up? It's for his own good end. I'm giving Ronnie up to the law. The law? What has Ronnie done? He's been selling stolen property. A fence for thieves. Mike has a warrant for him. Elmer and Percy, they're to blame for this. If Ronnie hadn't been weak, it wouldn't have happened. You won't take him, Mike. He's your friend. I'll have to take him. What do I care if Ronnie's broken the law? I'll fight for him. I'll help him get away. I'll go with him where he'll be safe. I'll hide him where you won't find him. I'm sorry, Anne. Where is he? He's, he's in my room, Mike. Do it. it was the only way left to make a man of him. Prison never made a man of anybody. It'll give him a chance, time to think, to get a grip on himself. Ronnie, Ronnie, why didn't you let me know? I'd have hidden you. Where, in Bruce Rogers' home? I'd rather jail. Anne. Anne. We'll have to go now. You can see him later. It was the only way, son. The only way. Let's go. You're responsible for this. You betrayed your own son. I'll not stay in this house another minute. You, you...
What's wrong, Mother? Are you ill? Ronnie! Ronnie! Mike! 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 Come back! Mother. Mother. Do something quickly. I'll go phone the doctor. Here, put this pillow over on the couch there. He ran out on me when I was looking after his mother. He did? Well, I guess I'll not hold me new job very long. That's too bad, Mike. Letting me first prisoner escape. I'll be a flat foot again. Light. You're making me nervous. Yes, and you're giving me the heebie-jeebies. Well, I'm not used to hiding out in a hole like this. It'll give you what Ann calls local color. Yeah. Maybe you can write a book about it. Who is it? It's me. Sounds like Ann. Anybody watching out there? No. Ronnie. <laughs> oh, cut it out. Looks like old home week. Yes, or a family reunion. Oh, shut up, you crooks. Hey, this guy's been bellowing ever since we holed up in this joint. We thought we'd let you come up so we can make a proposition. Go ahead. Then listen to mine. It's this. You're in with Bruce Rogers. I haven't even worked for him since Ronnie left. Well, you want your husband back, don't you? Well, there's only one way I can get him. If we can make one big haul and then duck to Europe, you can join him. Ronnie, are you in on this scheme? Well, I've got to get out of here. So you want me to be a crook, too? Want me to help rob a man who trusts me? All because you're too rotten cowardly to walk out of here and take your medicine. Well, Rogers would steal you from me. So you couldn't stand paying for what you've done. But you could stand running away when your mother was dying. Well, I didn't know it then. Anyway, she tried to send me to jail. You're not worth any woman's affection. But you do love me. And you know I'm sorry for everything I've done. I'll give you a chance to prove it. I've made arrangements with an attorney to get you as light a sentence as possible. No. No. Just think over our proposition, Mary. To you, Mike. Well, now what do we do, wise guys? Well, we're going to blow this joint. Come on, have your punish. Come on, Blair. Don't. I'm not 
bloody winters or you'll get plugged. Ronnie, I've come to tell you goodbye. That's swell. Wanted to be sure they were taking me to the pen today so as you could go back to Rogers. I came to tell you that I still love you. Tell that to Rogers. He'll be glad to hear it. Can't you understand I had to do it? That I want to make a man of you? Remember, Ronnie, I'll be thinking of you every minute. Waiting for you. Loving you. Yeah? I'll be thinking of you every minute. Hating you. Wishing I'd let you drown. Goodbye, Ronnie, dear. Get out of here. And get a divorce so I'll never have to look at you again, you traitor. You sister of Judas. You're working too hard. I have to keep my mind occupied. Have you heard from Ronnie? Not a word since he went there. For over a year, every letter that I've written him has been returned unopened. And twice I went there to see him and he sent word back that he wasn't interested. Still hopeful? No, Bruce. It took me a long time to realize that I couldn't win his love back. I can only hope that it's helped him. And you don't regret sending him to prison? I shouldn't be sorry for having done my best. And there's something I should have told you. I took up his case with the parole board. They let him out two months ago. He's been out two months? I thought he'd come back to you. Oh, that was good of you, Bruce. But I gave him up some time ago. I found it was just eating my heart out. So, I strangled the last bit of love I had for him. And keep only pity. Anne, I've had a struggle keeping my thoughts to myself since I was baited into confessing my love for you. But I was afraid to come back to work. Afraid you might bring that subject up again. I've appreciated your not doing so. Then you don't want me to. I'm going away to get a divorce. He'll give me a chance to think things over. I'll wire you later. Here's the first copy of Cry of a Soul. Shall I have the author autograph it for you? Thank you, I'll see to it. I have an appointment. Mr. Gibson is pressing us for a decision on his manuscript. What shall I tell him? Say that I'm withholding my decision until Mrs. Ross has a chance to read it. I expect her back in a few days. I'm glad you chose the library for the ceremony, Bruce, dear. It's your treasure room, isn't it? It's the home of paradise lost. Don't you think we'll have sort of a paradise regained after today? 
unless someone beats me to it again. Oh, well, this isn't Christmas, you know, and there's nobody being against you. A new book? Yes. Jut out, and one of the best in years. Cry of a soul. The author autographed the first copy for you. in there, waiting for you. Yes, Anne. A new Ronnie. Oh. Well, uh, big pardon, sir. You're not leaving before the minister arrives? Yes. Just show him into the library. He'll know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> 